All right, we're back. And this is part one of our Building a Better 312s uh, video series. And the first thing we're gonna talk about here is the block. Uh, choosing a block. Um, this engine is gonna be somewhere in the 350 to 400 horsepower range. You know, um, pretty common of the types of engines that we like to build around here and very uh, par for the course for a lot of the parts that we stock and have made over the years. So being that this engine's probably not gonna make over 400 horsepower, uh, the biggest, most important ingredient to selecting your block is condition. Making sure that the block's in very good shape and has minimal uh, rust pitting in the cylinder walls and uh, very clean internal coolant passages. Ninety percent of all blocks out of contention in the modern era for being used on an engine build. Um, for engines of this power level, the casting number is probably the last thing on the list as far as anything that we would consider for uh, being a, a key ingredient to the selection. Okay, the most important thing is, is it would obviously have to be a 292. That would be important. All right, so to verify that you have a 292, you want to go to 4-y-block.com, go about two thirds of the way down the home page, click on block numbers, and then it'll tell you how to uh, identify all the different uh, blocks. We're looking for 292 block. So uh, there's there's the dozen or better guys. This is just a couple, but there's EDB stuff. Um, there's C18E. There's a lot of uh, other part numbers from 55, like ECL, others. So plenty of uh, plenty of 292 block numbers to choose from. Um, we're quickly going over all of our requirements that's our power level we're doing a 292 to 312 conversion uh, it's got to be in good shape uh, no sleeves or cracks uh, bore needs to clean up at 3820 so that means that uh, engines that have already been rebuilt in the past uh, been bored 30 or 40 over maybe some 60s but a lot of blocks are available to us and then here's a little procedure thing that I outlined that just says, you know, basically what this block is going to go through. So obviously we hot tanked and magged it years ago and then we bored and honed it and we uh, align honed the mains, especially because it has the studs in it. Um, so we did our trial assembly or we're doing it. We're checking clearances. We're going to check for deck height. Um, we're going to set the uh, deck height up. John likes five in the hole uh, with thick gaskets. I don't mind him being out of the hole a little bit. So we'll probably settle for zero or something like that. Uh, this block is a B9AE. That's one thing I wanted to talk about. This block's a B9AE and it has the uh, main bolt holes drilled deeper. So if you're using a block that's earlier... Um, one of them, probably, it's probably the most common prep thing that we do is we drill the holes deeper and there's a spec for that on the website as well. Um, and then we bottom tap the holes deeper just so we get more thread engagement on the, uh, main bolts. And it also allows you to knock the top thread off. Then we'll go ahead and we'll check all of our threads like we did. In our other video look for any bad threads with rust or gunk and then we're gonna obviously find the wash it paint and get it ready for assembly okay some final thoughts here um, talking about the, the top thread this is a 59 thing that I think they started doing in 59 and what they did is they drilled the holes deeper and then 
they also uh, did not thread them all the way to the top. And what that does is it just takes surface tension away up here and uh, can help prevent a crack from starting right here. So on the earlier blocks that have less main cap preload, I, I do like to run studs when I can. I think it is one thing that helps um, make the earlier blocks just more sturdy. So, you know, stud installation's pretty straightforward on the front four caps. Uh, at the back, that's where things get a little trickier. So when you do studs in the back, what you have to do is you have to shorten the studs down and uh you know we just cut these on our lathe here i mean they're not that hard a decent machine shop can cut them down and you know it's you'll just have to install them in the block and then measure how far they stick up and that uh, you know it's approximately 200 or 250 thousandths they got to trim them um and then on the rear main seal holder you know, you usually end up doing a little clearancing uh, for the nut itself. It's um, a bigger head than like an ARP style bolt. So, but that's part of the game. And this is just for anybody who wants to run studs. It's uh, this area here has to be addressed. So I'm trying to take a good photo of that for you guys now so you can kind of see um what's been done this is what it looks like if you just thread it in there main bolts can also be used in the rear cap uh, for good street engines it's perfectly fine we've done it before we've used studs in the front four mains and then put main bolts in the rear if you don't want to go through all of the machining of the studs on the ARP bolts, you probably will have to do a little clearancing of the main cap, or sorry, the, the rear main seal holder, just because they sit up taller with the hard washer. Um, please go to FordWideBlock.com. Uh, go two-thirds of the way down the page, and then click on Installation Instructions, and then Main Cap Fasteners. You will find a world of... Uh, information there much more specific details on uh, hole depths and uh, modifying some of the bolts for the oil passages sometimes the bolts will stick down yeah, but there's there's just so much information there and you know it certainly helps us if you go there first and can get some of your questions answered before you call all right so i think that wraps it up for our block selection video and uh, hope you guys liked the video hit like subscribe and uh, we'll be coming back with the next installment in this series pretty quick so anyway have a good one guys happy wide blocking